Hi everyone, it's Karen here with a new video tutorial on how to create 10 different crackle texture techniques. Enjoy! The technique number one is stamping with a crackle texture stamp and dye ink or any type of ink. I use black archival ink from Ranger and I just stamp different textured stamps onto my cardstock. These are stamps from different manufacturers and I will list all my products below in the description area so you know which one I've used. Technique number two also involves stamping, but this time I stamped over gesso. So I took one of my crackled stamps and stamped it right into some wet gesso. I pushed into it and then lifted the stamp and it created the crackle texture in the background. Make sure you clean your stamp very well after stamping them with gesso. While it was still wet, I still grabbed another piece of paper and stamped what was left over from the gesso onto that paper. I used Prima Finnevair heavy white gesso. To use, to be able to stamp into the gesso, it's best if it's very heavy in consistency. But if you want to just stamp it, you could just use any type of gesso in any color, even acrylic paint. My cardstock got a little bit wet with water right before I stamped on it, but that has nothing to do with the technique. The technique was more showing you how like, you can either stamp with the gesso or stamp into the gesso. The third technique is the crackle paste. And all you have to do is with a palette knife or silicone brush, you apply it to a background. In this case, I'm demonstrating three different colored pastes Different manufacturers make different types of pastes. This one is Finnabare Prima Marketing and I did it in clear paste which is right on the, on the right hand side. In the middle it's copper paste and on the left hand side it's a gold colored paste. It, they come in many different other colors, silver, black, white and just, just wanted to show how the paste reacts on, and how it creates texture. I let the paste air dry and this is the result. As you can see, it really crackled in certain areas. The heavier you put the paste, the bigger the crackles are going to be. The other thing is that it's better to let it air dry than heat set it as the crackles won't show as much and won't crack as much when you're heat setting it. So air drying is the best. As the clear paste dried transparently, I wanted to show the cracks, so I added a little bit of ink with a dauber, and then I wiped it off with the wipe so it could go into the cracks and it could show the cracks really well. 
My fourth technique is using crackle glaze. It's a little bit different than the paste. It's more liquidy and clear and kind of gooey. Some manufacturers uh, make glaze instead of paste. This one is made by Deco Art, and also I let it dry, heat uh, air dry, which is best, and it really created big crackles. Just to show you again the cracks, I'm applying some ink and then removing some of it with a wipe so the ink goes inside the cracks and you can really see the cracks well. I'm linking a video above where I've used this technique in one of my projects. Technique number five is creating crackle texture with a palette knife. You can apply some gesso or paint, preferably thicker acrylic paint, and then patting with the palette knife, you can create texture. I found that acrylic paint creates a better texture than gesso, but the consistency has to be thick in order for yourself to get this te crackle texture in the background. I also let this air dry and you can see the crackled effect once it's dry. My sixth technique uses a stencil with paste. I have two different types of stencils that have a crackle pattern on it. The first thing I did is use some white modeling paste on the first stencil, which is the Crafters Workshop stencil, and then just added Prima Finabare modeling paste on it. The other stencil is a Prima stencil as well, and I added some Deco Art black modeling paste on it. I wanted to show how you can use white, black, or silver, gold, any type of modeling paste you have. I just wanted to show the two different effects if you add a dark one and a light one. And it's with two different types of stencils that create crackle. Technique number seven also involves the stencil, but this time I applied it with ink. I used Tim Holtz Vintage Photo Distress Ink, but you can use any type of ink. You just use a dauber and you just mix it on, it just like rub it onto the stencil and create crackle patterns. This doesn't give such a 3D effect, but it's still a really cool effect to create crackle texture. The eighth technique is also using a stencil, but this time I'm going to be spraying within the stencil. I used some spraying ink and created uh, the same pattern, this crackle pattern, onto the background. Then I took another piece of paper, and so not to waste the ink on it, and I just pressed onto the stencil and it created a different types of crackle, a like very cool mixed media crackle. And again, I did it one more time to get uh, another ghost image from the paper, from the ink. The ninth technique is using a two-step crackle texture paste and the first thing you have to put is a crackle primer and I added it onto both pieces of cardstock because I wanted to use both white and black crackle paste. This type of technique takes longer as it's a two-step technique and you have to wait until the primer dries. So I had to wait for a few hours until this primer dried and then I applied the crackle paste. However, although it takes longer, it does give you very good big crackles, which you want if you want that effect and that's really good. The thinner you the thicker you add the paste, the bigger the crackles are going to be on the background. So although this technique is more time consuming, look at the beautiful crackles it creates. 
I left this technique and the last one as they're more involved and have more steps with them. Technique number 10, it uses soft matte gel and some sprays. The first thing I did is I used a palette knife to spread it onto the cardstock and then created some grooves in it by patting the soft gel into the background. While the gel was still wet, I sprayed three different colors onto the background, some greens and blues, and then I sprayed some Magic Stone black spray so that only at the edges so it would like mix up with the other colors. Then I used my heat gun to heat set it and make sure that the cracks start happening as soon as you start heat setting it. So I left, this is the only one that I've left to show you that as I'm heat setting it, the cracks start to form. I've used this technique before but it, because it gives really good results as you can see here. And I've linked my another video where I've used this technique above. Here are close-ups of all the backgrounds and the techniques. I did forget to mention that I used some regular cardstock for the background, uh, but these techniques can be applied to any type of substrate. Thank you so much for watching. For more inspiration, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Bye!